Good morning, is Maverick and Goose back over here yet? Good morning, modern steaders. I still don't hear Maverick and Goose this morning. Oh, still no signs of them anywhere. Not even feathers that there was an attack, so it's hard knowing what happened to them. I was hoping I was gonna come out on the homestead this morning and find Maverick and Goose. I know it was probably wishful thinking, but it's too quiet on the homestead without them. They're always out walking around, quacking, and making a mess in all the waters. Good morning. Good morning. No Maverick and Goose still. Oh, I keep looking. Oh, haven't, I see him. haven't heard nothing yet. Making them a little smoggish bog for breakfast. Some cereal. jump right up there. Let's go out here. I'll go get Ivy and all the other girls for you. Come on. Zeke's calling you. Oh, you gotta stop and pee this morning, girl. Come on. Ivy's in here. No, you're not seeing Zeke. Zeke sounds like he's going through puberty right now. His voice keeps cracking. Good morning. Did you ladies eat all of your rutabaga leaves yesterday? Or did you leave a bunch for today? You got an itch there, Blossom? Sheesh there, Ivy. Being a little rough on Mummer, aren't you? You didn't eat all the rutabaga leaves, but you ate quite a few of them. More than half. I bet you they'll finish the rest today. Nora, where are you, Nora? Huh. There you go. an attitude this morning, Willow. She's acting the same way she acts every day. <laughs> Tootie. Our goat with the most attitude. I think everybody's got to have at least one like that. You want to go out? Are you ready? Them boys are getting loud. Figaro hasn't come down here yet to eat any of the pig grain, but I know he's out and about. I saw him hunting mice earlier this morning. He had his own little catch, clean, and cook going on. <laughs> oh, we let him outside, and not even two minutes later, he already had a mouse in his mouth. Man, 
he is a vicious hunter. Good morning, ladies. You're drooling. You're that excited about breakfast, you're drooling. Good morning, ladies. We need to catch you all and start clipping your wings again. I clipped all of their wings once, and now their feathers are growing back, so they're starting to fly out of the net and laying their eggs all over the farm. So the question is, where are we gonna find your eggs today, ladies? Good morning, Figaro. You're all down to your catch, clean, and cook? I already fed the pigs. No pig grain this morning, mister. Was that mouse tasty, huh? Was that better than pig grain? We plan on growing in our greenhouse all winter long without heat. A couple of things that we did is we put two layers of greenhouse plastic on, and what that does is that gains us two growing seasons. So we're in growing zone 4B here in northern New Hampshire. We're going to be in growing zone 6B when we're done installing what we have in the box here today. So we have two layers of greenhouse plastic, and today we need to cut a hole into it, which is kind of the <laughs> nerve-wracking part. You put the plastic on, trying not to get any holes into it, and then today we got to cut a hole into it and I gotta cut a hole into the bottom layer. Then I gotta put this flange in place. Put our flange in place. Then we have some duct work, and then we have a fan, and this fan's gonna run off the solar power, and it's gonna inflate the two layers of plastic, which they say can take up to two days to inflate the plastic. So it's gonna be interesting to see, once we get this installed, how long it takes for that plastic to inflate. And then when it gets closer to winter and the greenhouse is completely closed up, there's one more step we have to do to the sides, but we'll save that for later on when we're doing it. First of all, we gotta get set up, cut a hole in our greenhouse plastic, and then get this installed. So, let's get over there and get started. You can tell it's already pretty warm in the greenhouse because those vents are opened up on both ends, and those open automatically once it gets 65 degrees or warmer in the greenhouse. Is Figaro hunting the hornworms for you? I was hoping, but I don't think so. Did you find any? Uh, two. Two already? Yeah. What the heck? I even hunted them last night. I know. So our broccoli's looking good. It looks like one of them died, so we'll have to replant this one this morning. But all the rest of them are looking good. We have our cauliflower. Looks all really nice. And then this was our cabbage, and our spinach is looking good. Right, Figaro? And then that lettuce is looking really nice. So we're in good shape. We just gotta replant one broccoli. So this is the last big step that we need to do to the greenhouse to get it ready for winter growing. We got some smaller things we need to do, but this is the last big hurdle. We got the vents done. We gotta figure out the positioning we wanna put that blower motor. So we're gonna have to undo the plastic cover a little bit so we can get our hand in it. So I'm thinking maybe we'll go a little bit higher, move the ladder this way a smidge. If we go like right here, I can still reach my hand in to get the flange. Then we can put the motor there. If you guys haven't seen the video of us building this greenhouse, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. The top ridge purlin is up high on all of the bows, except for the very end one. We tucked it down and under, and we did that so when the air gets into these pockets, it can escape more over to that side. So both ends are that way. So it's going to be interesting to see what this looks like inflated versus not inflated. All right, let's see if we can get some, we got to get a piece of this wiggle wire undone. There we go. We've got to reach our hand in between the two layers. So I can reach to here. I can cut a hole here. Let me undo a little bit more of this wiggle wire.
All right, I'm gonna make a mark here. And it leaves a mark on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. I will kind of know where to cut. I want to make an X. Boom. Boom. All right, let's see if that's big enough. I'm probably gonna make a bigger incision. Go to the inside and get our flange on. All right. There we go. Slide it up in place. Give it an old twist, a Rooney, like so. Get that sealed. That fits good. Now we can install. Wow, I'm sorry if that uh, sun is bright on your old eyeballs. Now we can get everything else installed. Found another one. Yep. Big one. Pretty big. Where is he? Oh yeah, look at that fatty. Where do these guys keep coming from? I don't like touching them. It's just water. I just don't want them to climb out. I don't know if they would. The chickens enjoy them. I see a fresh turd right there. So that usually means there's one around. Yeah, right here. Oh yeah, there it is. I like, this. I like to get rid of the turds. Cause... Oh, now I got you calling them turds. Yeah, what the heck? I don't like that <laughs> word. Uh... Why did you get me saying that? Poop. Turds. I did say turn. Gotta get a few supplies down here at the barn. Boom. And our wire. I don't think we need such a big gauge wire, but this is what we have, so we're gonna use it. have some conduit left over from another project so we're gonna grab it and use it today looks like our greenhouse has a belly button now uh, all right so let's take a piece of conduit we're gonna be going from our solar panel bam for the greenhouse. So I'm gonna run it in right here. And I'm thinking I should probably get some weather tight ends for them. If you guys think that's a good idea, leave it in the comments down below. That'll probably help keep mice and stuff out of the conduit. Come right in here. Perfect. 
since I don't have a vacuum and I can't suck the line through, I put a nut on the end of it. I'm going to see if we can... Okay. Right there, good? Yeah. All right. All right. I'll get some more dirt later on and cover the whole thing. But now we can get the fan wired up. All right. That sun is right in the old eyeballs. Sorry about that. So we're going to want to go right here. Like so. I think that'll work good. And we got room there. We can run our wire here over this purlin, down there, and down that wall. That'll be perfect. I like that right there. So this is a fan motor from a computer. And then this is a little door so we can get more air in or less air in, depending on what we need. gonna work perfectly. Now we're gonna be connecting the fan to the belly button with a dryer vent and some zip ties. There we go. Get it up over a little bit further. I'm trying to get over all those tabs. I like that right there. I'm gonna take a nice long zip tie. Zip tie it on there. We're gonna run it up and over to our vent. There we go. That's on there. Yep. That's on there good. All right. Now let's get the electrical hooked up. Pull the string, I'll feed the wire. Okay, keep going. I'm gonna pull quite a bit extra in. All right, that should be good for now. I'll have to try our peppers. We have a bunch of green ones. See if they're good with pickled those. Oh, the pickled peppers? Yeah, that's right. Try some pickled peppers. So we can go like here, here. I want a little bit more wire exposed. And the automotive guy in me says we need to use some heat shrink butt connectors. So white is going to red. There we go. Perfect. People have been asking about the bumblebees. I don't know if you can hear them right now, but I hear them inside of that hive. 
they're just a buzzing around. It is so hot in that greenhouse, it's not even funny. It's only 70 degrees out today, but man, is it warm in that greenhouse. All right, cut them a little bit long. And then we're gonna have to make some final adjustments afterwards, but I wanna make sure everything works good before we go ahead and call it good. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I do. Fans going. We gotta go back on the outside now and close up the gap where we can check it out and see how much airflow we're getting also. So this fan will run 24 seven. Let's see how much, a little bit of air. It's not a lot, but it'll take some time to inflate the greenhouse. It'll inflate the two layers of greenhouse plastic and it'll give it a better insulating factor. There we go. That's gonna take a few hours for that to inflate completely on both sides. So this house is 32 wide by 48 long. And this one fan, it's gotta do both sides. So you can hear the fan, but it's not super loud, which is nice. That was another one of my concerns. I was hoping it wasn't gonna be too loud in here with the fan running all the time. So I just got done hooking up the fan and it is 1015 so it'll be interesting to see how long it takes for that to inflate completely I'll have to come back and check in on it every hour or so so it's been just over an hour and a half now and it is starting to inflate pretty good on this side curious to see no it's still not fully inflated but it's getting there I wonder what the other side looks like. Yeah, the side's getting there too. So the thing with the greenhouse plastic is that it heats up and it stretches during the summertime. So it's gonna look like a bigger and more fluffier pillow. And then in the winter time, the plastic shrinks back down and it won't be as big of a pillow, so it'll look tighter. So it'll be interesting to see how much of an air gap there is between the two layers right now, and then how much of an air gap there is this winter. down below and we're really excited to try that out. Do you see the greenhouse? It looks like a big old pillow now with the air oh, going Oh, I didn't up. even notice that. So what's that going to do? It's going to keep it warmer in the greenhouse. It helps, ins helps insulate it. You ladies ready for your afternoon snack? Holy moly! Watch out, stampede. I saw some of it. What are you doing, Nora? It's not for you. Come on. Feed you right there. How many eggs? Um, 11. 11? Yeah. All right, how many eggs are you thinking? I'm gonna Let me say guess. 10. Let me guess. How many do you think? <laughs> I'm gonna see first. Two, four, and two broody hens. How many eggs are you sitting on? Five, 
five, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Did you say thirteen, Livies? Oh. I said twelve. I said ten. Find any eggs? Yeah. One. One? How many you think is over here, Livies? Two. Uh, three. Three. Holy moly. All right, Olivia says three. I'm thinking two. I see two. And that's it. The black copper moran did not lay an egg today. Two, Olivia. Two. Two. Mine? Yep. You ready to pick some corn for dinner? Look at these two big summer squashes. Oh, yeah. Buttercup squashes. Hanging off the fence. Potatoes. One, two, here. right next to each other. Get better than sweet potatoes. I'm seeing it all over the place. I was thinking I only had a couple. Here's one. What is this? Here's the mussels. There you go. All right, that's two. I got another one right here. Three. One on the end. Big buttercup squash right there. Four. Four. Right there. Six. Six. Got it. all the husk off the corn. I'm just going to remove them from the pot. I'm going to get my little rack in here. And because this is an eight quart instant pot, I'm going to put two cups of water. If it was a six quart, you could do a cup and a half, I believe. So we have six ears of corn. I fit right in there nicely. You can put as many as you want in here as long as they fit. I'm just going to get the pot inside the instant pot, the cover on, put my nail set on, make sure it's set to seal, and then manual, so get that down to two. See how it is. It smells really good. All of this is from the homestead. Mm-hmm. Well, the butter's not, but someday no. it's gonna be. Yeah, someday it will be. Or it could be. I want it. This sweet corn is so delicious. We didn't think it was gonna come out this well. It really got pollinated really well. The only thing it could have been better is the kernels could have been a little bit bigger. Leave it in the comments down below if you know what makes kernels bigger. Is it the variety or is it lack of water? Cause we had a dry year this year and we're not watering down at the pig garden. But 
Next year we're going to do better, but man, we are happy with the corn from this year. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us, guys. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, now is a great time to do that. And it lets YouTube know that you guys appreciate the channel, you like it, and that it helps YouTube push our videos out to a bigger audience. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.